What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 23. This, of course, is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. The Disney Company operates the largest theme park enterprise in the world. With six resorts around the world and over 130,000 employees, nothing can even compare to the quality and magic of the parks. What most of you may not know is that about 18 miles outside the Japanese city of Osaka lays an abandoned replica theme park of Disneyland. This park, infamous for its replication, is called Nara Dreamland. After World War II in Japan, their industry was booming and much like the United States, they were looking to add to the industry. In the early 50s, a Japanese businessman named Kunzio Matsuo created and appointed himself CEO of Matsuo Entertainment Company. Over in the United States, a man named, you may have heard of him, uh, Walt Disney was opening his theme park dream called Disneyland. On July 17, 1955, Disneyland opened to the public in Anaheim, California. With the park now open, Matteo flew down to California to visit the park. With being so impressed on what Walt Disney had done, Kunzio envisioned something like this being perfect for Japan. Matteo began talking with Walt Disney about possibly building and franchising a Disneyland in Japan. Things were looking pretty good about this deal, too. Disney sent down Imagineers to prepare ideas and sketches for the imagined park. However, soon after, Disney and Matsuo couldn't agree on licensing fees for the park. So towards the opening of the now-named Nara Dreamland, all Disney-branded IPs were removed and Nara Dreamland was its own separate entity. So even without Disney's consent and permission to use their likeness in Nara Dreamland, the decision was made to say, ah, whatever, and build the park anyway. So on July 1st, 1961, Nari Dreamland officially opened to the public in Japan. The park opened with a pink castle, a mountain off to the northwest, and uh... Wait a minute, these kind of look familiar. Yeah, so let's not beat around the bush here. These are pretty similar to Disneyland's landmarks. To put it bluntly, the park is a cheap copy of Disneyland in California. Now it's not as big, and obviously a lot of things are actually different than the actual real park, but my god, do some things here look pretty similar. As soon as you enter the park, things begin to look creepily familiar. Classic Main Street from Disneyland is right down the road after you walk under another copy, the Main Street train station. Now the park's centerpiece featured a castle, which is probably the most similar icon to the original Disneyland. Other parts of the park featured normal roller coasters that you might see at Six Flags, but the park did have some attractions and pieces that you probably weren't expecting, like an actual monorail that ran through the kinda Tomorrowland. The park also featured a Jungle Cruise-esque ride and the classic Disneyland Skyway. Another extremely noticeable copy was the Matterhorn Mountain. Just like Disneyland, this poorly plastered version also featured a bobsled coaster. Now probably the largest deviation from the original Disneyland was the water park incorporated just off to the south of the main hub. Honestly, despite how unethical this park was, when it first opened it was kind of reminiscent of what the original Disneyland looked and felt like in the early 60s. And with this, things for the park were doing well, and people liked going there as it was the closest thing they could get to Disneyland without traveling to America. And at its peak, the park brought in 1.6 million visitors a year. But then as 1979 came along, the Disney company made the announcement that they would be contracting the construction of a new Disneyland park in Tokyo, Japan. Even though Walt Disney's wife didn't really like the idea of this. I didn't even want him to do the one in Japan. <laughs> I thought this was enough. I thought this was beautiful and we did this and, and uh, the one out on the coast. But I understand it's going to be very nice. I hope it is. I think it should all come from here. <laughs> Get all the recognition all over the world from this place. But I've always had a feeling don't get too big, too large. I like how blunt she was about it. Nonetheless, construction began, and on April 15th, 1983, the Disneyland Tokyo Resort opened to the public. And as you might imagine, this took a huge blow to Nara Dreamland. Since a real Disneyland was actually in Japan, people would understandably go to that one instead of the cheap copy in Nara. And since the mid-80s, attendance for the park began to decrease, and it didn't help that Tokyo Disneyland continued to expand. This was made much worse when in 1988, the Oriental Land Company, which owns Tokyo Disneyland, 
Disneyland, announced they would be planning on building a second theme park in Tokyo. It wasn't until 1997 in which the official name and concept art were released to the public. The park was to be called Disney Sea, and it was one of Disney's most ambitious parks. The park stemmed off the increasing popularity and growth of Tokyo Disneyland. And with the immense success Disney was having, in 1998, Universal announced they would be building a park just 22 miles away from Nara Dreamland. Now this meant two major theme parks were being built within a four hour train ride from Nara Dreamland. Then in 2001, both Disney Sea and Universal Studios Japan opened officially to the public. And to this day, Disney Sea is still considered to be the best park Disney has ever built, with its immensely immersive theming. With the new parks open, this sparked a huge drop in attendance for Nara Dreamland, and with this drop, the park never recovered. By the time the early 2000s came in, attendance for the park continued to decrease, and more attractions were being added to the ever-growing popularity of the Universal and Disney parks. By 2006, Tokyo Disneyland had brought in over 12.9 million people, and Universal Studios Japan bringing in another 8.5 million. With these parks bringing in massively high attendance numbers, they were essentially drawing people away from other theme parks like Nara Dreamland. And by 2006, the park had extremely low attendance numbers. From its peak at 1.6 million visitors, the park slumped down to a very low and unprofitable 400,000 people per year. With the low visitation numbers in 2004, 5, and 6, the park began to decline in quality severely. Service trucks would be left out in the middle of the streets of the park, stores along Main Street would be closed and boarded up, rides could be seen rusting and deteriorating along with other attractions being left unused and abandoned right in plain sight. The park was left in total disrepair, and as the months went on the park saw less and less visitors and in return less profit. Finally, with the extremely low attendance numbers, the park closed permanently on August 31st, 2006. Employees were informed not to come in the next day, and essentially overnight, the park was left completely abandoned by its owners. Ever since that day, the park had been left deserted and unattended, and scrappers and vandals began to make their way in. Now interestingly, the park's remnants remained mostly intact, and the majority of the park was untouched. This included the park's infamous castle, the entire Matterhorn Mountain, and basically the majority of the roller coasters and rides the park housed. So as the years went on, the park continued to decay under the land's ownership. With the owner falling behind on their property tax of around 6.4 million US dollars, the land's ownership was opted to the city of Nara. It was unclear as to when the remnants of the park was left to the city, however in 2013 the land was offered in a public auction. It wasn't until 2015 when the land was finally sold to SK Housing for a reported 5.9 million US dollars. The plan was to demolish the park and build houses on the land. However, there was some challenges to that plan. The city had extremely strict zoning regulations, as building heights could only be limited to 10 meters. Also, the estimated price to demolish the existing park would exceed 2 million US dollars. So at this point, they're really asking the question, is it worth the investment to demolish and build on the land? So as of 2016, as far as we know, the land is still under the ownership of SK Housing. And from 2015, nothing really ever happened. Since then though, the security at the park has been heavily increased. Unfortunately though, vandalization is becoming quite a bit of a problem there, and really ruining how the park looked in its abandoned states. And I guess security is really the only way they can stop this. Still though, nothing in the park has been touched by the land's owners. Basically everything that was there in 2006 is, well, still there. It's actually been confirmed recently that the park is now being demolished. There's been tons of reports of uh, heavy machinery being parked out in the parking lot. Uh, there's some photos of inside the park of uh, smaller buildings, including the entrance, being taken down. And it looks like this is the smaller part of the larger preparation to take down the entire park. As for the Universal and Disney parks, well, Tokyo Disneyland was the third most visited theme park in 2016, and Universal being number four. So, as of right now, it looks like Nara Dreamland has met its end, and likely soon the entire park will be gone. Even though the park is being demolished, it still will remain one of the creepiest and most infamous abandoned theme parks that has ever existed. If you haven't yet, I strongly suggest you go watch the Proper Peoples and Exploring with Josh's video. They both tour the entirety of the park and present how incredible and surreal this place really is. Anyway guys, my name is Jake. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. 
and thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. Oh yeah. What's the um that's the uh, Kool-Aid guy. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now.